Look at this. I ain't made a video in forever on this channel. I got other stuff too underneath the gown. Across my whole body in this hospital room. But I ain't made a video in forever on the Maxwell's channel. And I come to y'all in this condition. It's tough. Me and my wife just had a really nice long talk. Um, very productive talk. Um, that's going to be great for our marriage in the future. Um, for those that don't know, this is the Maxwell's channel. I am Alanis Maxwell. And I mean, we only have 36, 36 subscribers, so pretty much nobody knows us, of course. But um, the purpose of me making this video is not to have anyone have any sympathy for me or anything like that or trying to you know, play the world's smallest violin. The reason for me making this video is so that <clears throat> I can tell y'all and I'm pretty sure you've heard this from many other people, or countless of people, and probably in my, my, my position. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't take life for granted, man. Okay. Just Tuesday, and I've been here since Tuesday. Right now, as I speak, it is Thursday, I believe. Hold on, let me look at, let me scroll my phone down and see. Yeah, so it's Thursday, August 17th. I've been here since Tuesday. Quick breakdown. Um, basically... Tuesday morning, 3.30, I woke up with chest pains, and the chest pains would not go away. Actually, a couple of minutes after, it got worse. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about a 9, 9.5 out of 10. It was bad. So I woke my wife up. Didn't want to wake her up, but my chest, it was going crazy. Woke her up. She got me in the car, got me to the hospital she asked me which one i wanted to go here go to here and i said let's let's do bones so she took me here um and and of course they got everything taken care of they say i have something that may be called dilated um, um cardiomyopathy okay and i had been dealing with breathing issues for a while but i didn't know what it was i just thought i was out of shape i'm thinking like Dang, I don't, I don't look like, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not super, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I, I, I don't like a Greek god by the body, but am I dead out of shape? I used to say that to myself. This was just not too long ago. You know, I would walk and be breathing hard and my stomach would feel weird. But lo and behold, this whole time, I've been dealing with a weak heart. Didn't even know. And it took this episode that just happened, which is the first time ever, Tuesday, for me to come to the hospital, get lab works, right, and figure out what was going on. Now, as I was saying, don't take life for granted, man. And us as men, we tend not to get checkups as, you know, as, as often as we should consistently. I'm one of those guys, right? I, I, I was having these issues, so this is something I should already went to my primary physician about never did because i just thought you know maybe i'm out of shape whatever right <coughs> <coughs> and like i said i was i was at death's door man i was at death's door and um right now i'm doing well they've been um you know taking my vitals consistently the, the staff here is tremendous from the the uh, patient care tech to the nurse um the, the main guy that's over my stuff, Dr. Elliot. Let me look real quick. Um, yeah, Dr. Elliot. Hey, shout out and salute to you, Dr. Elliot. Tremendous. Um, I am going to end up having to wear a um, a life vest for the next, they said, three months to just keep monitoring my heart and stuff once I leave here. Um, so Bill came by and talked to me earlier. I put both of their numbers on my phone ASAP. But going back to what I was saying. Don't take life for granted. Men, if you feel like you're going through something, you're having some weird pains, whether that's in your chest, um, you know, it could be anal, it could be, you know, up there with a PP, whatever. If you're having these weird issues and it's constantly these little triggers in your body, it's probably something going on. Okay. And you may not, it may not be nothing fatal at that moment, but if you allow it to develop over time, 
it can get ugly in the next year, next two or three years. Because again, I was having these breathing issues and I was like, what, why am I having them? And not until this episode, first time ever, right? Could have died easily, right? Um, not until this situation happened. And I went to the hospital Tuesday. So that would have been August the 15th. I found out about this though. Okay. Um, so now we're trying to figure out what's the new norm for us. They're going to possibly let me know if I can be released tomorrow, which will be Friday or Saturday, depending on how the labs look. You know, if the if the if they take my vitals, so, you know, they do the blood pressure and, uh, you know, um, temperature and all that. Everything's cool with that. And they, you know, check my blood work and that's cool. Um, they'll let me know if I can leave or not coming up tomorrow or Saturday. Again, tremendous team that's been working around the clock to take care of me. And I'm grateful. Uh, my family's not here right now. I told them, I said, go take a break. Just just go, go, go for a little bit. My wife has been on my side every single second. Um, she's been just just beautiful, right? Same thing with my kids. You know, I'm like, y'all go drill rest. The people that can take care of me the best, they're here. Okay. I got my I got all these buttons here if I need to, you know, get a hold of a nurse. I got my thing here if I need to get a hold of a nurse. Um, obviously they're sitting right here. I'm literally right by the desk, so worse I can yell. Um, but they're here, you know. And so, uh, but as I was saying, man, do not take life for granted. Men, I'm talking directly to the men. If you're feeling weird pains throughout your body, little sharp pains, I'm going to say it again. If it's in your chest, your anal area, like close to where your groin's at, um, I said chest, um, your, your ribs, whatever it is. If you're having these weird pains, sharp pains, squeezing pains, please go to your physician right away. All right, you should begin regular checkups anyway, number one. Again, this is something that I wasn't doing. Number two, even if you're getting regular checkups, if you start having these weird pains and they're coming consistently in, in a certain part of your body, go, go get checked on. Don't allow that to develop over time, okay? And going back to what I was saying about me and my wife, <clears throat> and I know this is a boring conversation, for the, so for those that's still here watching me right now, I do appreciate this. Appreciate you. And for those that even watched a little bit of the video, I appreciate it. Um, but going back to me and my wife, we we had a very productive but tough conversation um, about some things that probably needed to be talked about for a while. And I think it took this situation, you know, me now being in where I'm at now for this situa this conversation to be had. Um, like I told her, I said, look, woman, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. You know, I've, I've always, that's always been my position. You know, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I want to honor this contract until the day I die. Um, there was a very sappy, sad moment where she was like, you told me you was going to honor this contract. Um, I can't have you not honoring this contract, meaning that, you know, she don't want me leaving early and stuff like that. Love my wife to death. She loves me to death. Um, but as I was saying, in terms of the conversation we had earlier, it was it was absolutely tremendous. A lot of other things we need to talk about, um, you know, just moving forward and, um, and making sure that we're consistent with following through the things that we talk about. <coughs> you know, there were some things on my chest that I needed to get off <coughs> that I felt like that was held deep inside to consider her feelings. And there were some things that she held in. And again, it took this situation of me almost dying. And this is a marriage. Me and my wife have been with each other for over 15 years, married for over 12, right? Two awesome, beautiful kids. And it took me almost dying for us to have this conversation. Don't let you be the person. Don't let you be, don't let a reason like this be the reason why you finally come out with a serious or well needed conversation with your spouse or loved one. Okay. Because when they say life is short, it may not be short in the terms of the the amount of days and years or whatever, but life is short in terms of you just don't know, right? Because everybody here was very surprised about seeing somebody, you know, of my age and everything in the, in the hospital for this situation. So when they say life is short, you don't know, dude. It could be something that happens with your body. Your body can fail you. Obviously, straight bullet, plane flies the sky now being a bit facetious, but you know what I mean. 
So if you're right now watching this video, at this point in the video, if there's a, a cousin, a brother, a sister, an auntie, an uncle, a grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, friend, whoever it is, and you feel like you wasn't in the wrong about the situation, right? And it's something that could be redeemed, right? Y'all split up and start talking for some reason, but it can be serious. It can be redeemed. Nothing that's too crazy, right? Go reach out to that person. Tell them how you felt. You be the bigger person and y'all work on men in that relationship. Life is too short to be acting like that. I'm going to give you a quick story. I'm going to get out of here. My auntie, love my auntie. Right. She's she know who I'm talking to when I if she ever watched this video. She said, nephew, <laughs> we spend so much time um, worrying about things that truly don't matter. So she told me this story. She said her and her sister got into it over. An it was only no. She told me specifically, but I don't want to be too specific. She said they got into it. Long story short, they stopped talking for like a decade. So you're talking about 10 years. Right. And she said, she said, Meaty, and that's my nickname, you know. She always called me by my nickname. She said, Meaty, after 10 years, we got back, we ended up back in each other's presence or space because, like, somebody died. I think it was, like, our great-grandma, like, one of the cornerstones of our family members. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, y'all. They ended up in the room together. Everybody left. Obviously, either one of them could have left, too. But for, for whatever reason, they both stayed in the room. And they started talking to one another. And as they began to talk, the situation that happened 10 years ago came up. Come to find out, they're like, oh, my God, we lost 10 years of our life with each other for that? 10 years. Something that could have been discussed in less than 30 seconds, definitely five minutes. They lost 10 years. Now, they're doing good now. But just think about stuff like that, man. Was it worth it? Hell no. All right? So, again, unless it's something that's that's not redeemable, Almost everything's redeemable, right? Where if this person did this to you, y'all can eventually talk it out and, and work on men in that relationship, right? Almost everything. There's very few things on the planet that, to me, a person should be able to do to you where you're like, mm, no, we can't talk anymore. So again, if you're watching this video, first of all, men, go get checked up consistently, all right? I'd rather get the bad news early, get it taken care of, then get the bad news when you're damn near about to die. All right. And number two, if you <clears throat> are in a situation where you've broken up uh, some friendship or relationship with somebody that was important to you based off a situation, and it would probably, in the grand scheme of things, didn't even matter, right? It wasn't even nothing big. You just, your ego won't let you go back and, and have that conversation. Go back. Be the bigger person. Explain how you felt. It's fine. It's fine that you felt some type of way. You was offended by it, but y'all work that shit out. You know, excuse my French. Excuse my cousin. Go and talk to him. Okay. I've done those things. Now again, me and my wife, we had the conversations that we needed to have. We're going to continue to talk about this stuff. This is something that we needed to talk about. Right. But I got family members too that I'm close to that we were kind of off on some situ in a situation because we hadn't talked. We talked it out. I had that same situation with my biological dad. I talked with him, but this was like about eight years ago. So it didn't take this situation for me to reach out to him. I reached out to him years ago about how I felt, you know, growing up as a boy and stuff like that. <coughs> so again, man, I thank y'all for watching this video. Um, I'll do my best to do more videos. I know that this is kind of a, you know, a downer, probably not the best video, probably boring, things of that nature, but just wanted to get that off my chest. And um, yeah, I'll just see y'all on the next video.